Now it's been three years since the Xbox Series X was first released and it's still one of the two main flagship consoles you can buy. Now, in 2023, is it still worth the price you're paying for or are there better options? Hi guys, my name is Manny Rital. In today's video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at the Xbox Series X. We're gonna look at the technical specs. We're gonna look over the gameplay and we're gonna look at the options that you might wanna consider in 2023 in this new current era of video games. And guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay on top of all the new gaming technology and technology in general. I make videos on a weekly basis with reviews and unboxings. Now we're going to jump straight into the contents of the box when you purchase an Xbox Series X. Now I actually did an unboxing, you can find it right here. But in all standard packages, you're going to get the Xbox console itself. You're going to get one controller, an HDMI cable, and a power cable, and that's essentially it. Now I personally got the Diablo Edition, so you do get a digital voucher where you can download on the Microsoft website. Now, talking about the design of the Xbox Series X, some people think it's a little bit too plain, but I personally love the rectangular look. It's compact enough where you can place it anywhere you want, and it can stand both vertically and horizontally. Now, on the outside, you do get three USB 3.1 ports. So these are next generation ports. You get pretty high transfer speeds. You can use this for external storage, but you can also use it to connect your controller without having to use your battery. You also get an HDMI 2.1 port. So that means 4K gaming at 120 Hertz and you also get a ethernet port. So dedicated ethernet for low latency and online gameplay. So you don't have to rely on wireless. And the best part, it comes with a disk drive. And I'll talk about why the disk drive is so important a little later in the video. And additionally, you get expandable storage on the Xbox, but you can expand it externally. So it's simply plug and play. And these drives are made by Seagate. I'll talk a little bit more why these are so important, but unlike the PS5, you don't have to take the plates off and no screwdrivers necessary very easy to access and remove. Now, in terms of the cooling, the Xbox Series X does an amazing job keeping the thing very, very cool. And it's very quiet. The fan that the Xbox uses is extremely quiet and quite large, and you can see it actually on top, looking at it through the grill. And on the inside, everything is staggered in a way where it allows heat to dissipate properly. So at no point has the Xbox Series X ever overheated, and it's never loud. So if you've ever owned a PS4, you know how loud some consoles can get, but the Xbox is the exact opposite and Microsoft did a phenomenal job with the cooling. And for those of you who have a keen eye, the bottom stand actually has a little bit of an Easter egg in very small font. It says, hello from Seattle. Of course, Microsoft's head office is in Seattle. So that's a little nice touch that Microsoft added to the Xbox. Now in terms of memory and storage, the Xbox Series X is listed at one terabyte. However, if you go into the user settings, you'll notice that only 800 gigabytes of this is actually usable. 200 gigabytes is allocated to the operating system and for updates. So be careful when you are looking at buying games. A lot of these games are pretty high in volume. Some of them can go up to 200 gigabytes. So it's 800 gigabytes, not one terabyte of actual usable space. Now I did mention the expansion slot on the Xbox and it's good news. So Seagate actually makes proprietary expansion slots for the Xbox where you can simply plug and play and expand your storage. Like I said, unlike the PS5, you don't have to take anything apart. You simply buy these expansion slots and plug it into your Xbox and you can get up to two terabytes of extended storage. So very, very convenient. The only thing I don't like about this is that Seagate is the only company that really is supported by Xbox. There are third party manufacturers that have made these, but if anything were to happen, it's not covered under warranty. Okay, now let's get into the fun stuff and let's talk about the gaming. Now, the technical specs in terms of the gaming on the Xbox Series X is this comes with 12 teraflops of power and 16 gigabytes of RAM. What that really means is it's pretty much identical to the PlayStation 5. So in terms of performance, you're going to get equal performance. And these days, a lot of developers are making their games in a way that it runs almost the same on a PS5 and an Xbox. Unlike the old generations where certain consoles had advantages and disadvantages, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are pretty much on a level playing field. Now, one feature that really separates the Xbox from the PS5 in gaming is Quick Resume, and it's one of my favorite features. Quick Resume allows you to jump right back into a game no matter where you left it in under 10 seconds. So you can be playing a game. For example, I love playing F1 and I can be in the middle of a race. I can leave that game and come back to it at any point and start that race exactly where I left off without having to deal with loading screens. And you can do this with three games running simultaneously. So you don't have to worry about going to a pause menu and saving your game. You can simply leave and come back to it. And this is very convenient. There's a lot of times where you're either on a time crunch, whether you have to go to work or you have to go to school and you essentially just leave the game as is. And in the old days and on the PlayStation 5, sometimes you have to make sure that the game is saved before you leave. 
Here, you can just simply leave your Xbox, you can set it in sleep, you can even turn it off, and when you turn it back on, you can jump right back into it. A lot of people overlook this feature, but this is the one feature that really separates itself from the pack. Even the PC, not a lot of games allow you to do this. Xbox really hit it out of the park with this one. Now, gaming performance in general on the Xbox Series X has been amazing. Consistently, I've never hit a spot where I've hit any sort of lag and I've had to reset the console. I've gotten consistent 60 FPS on 4K gaming for a lot of games and certain games you do have to play at 30 FPS, but that's based on the settings you choose within the game. If you want to play quality or performance mode. The Xbox Series X, you can game up to 120 FPS and it allows you to play all the old generation of games. So Xbox One, Xbox 360, and even the original Xbox games are supported on the Xbox Series X. Now remember the disk drive I was talking about earlier? The Xbox Series X actually allows you to play all the older games in backwards compatibility, not just in your Xbox Series X games. So I had a couple games laying around from the old generation 360. I simply inserted the disc and it installed it. I was able to play at the resolution I wanted to. This is such a convenience and such a big difference between the PS5 where it only has PS4 backwards compatibility. PS3 and PS2 games do not work on the PS5. With the Xbox Series X, Microsoft did their consumers a huge favor by allowing them to play their old library with the new console. So that is a major, major big upgrade over the PS5 and a reason why I personally love this console. Now, since it's been three years since the Xbox Series X has been released, there is a vast array of titles available for this console. Now, the biggest downgrade and downside to any console when it's first released as there aren't enough titles to play. Now being 2023 and three years after its release, there are a number of titles and a lot of exclusives for the Xbox Series X. I personally have been playing Starfield and Forza Motorsport and there are other exclusives available just for the Series X. Now the navigation and layout of the Xbox Series X dashboard is actually very clean. It's the exact same as the Series S and customizability is very high. So you can change up the theme, the colors, and even the day or dark modes on the Xbox dashboard very easily through the custom settings and navigating through it is also a breeze. Very similar to the PlayStation layout, you can pretty much find anything you need on the home page and it never lags. So both PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X navigating around both consoles is very, very simple. Another major feature available on the Xbox Series X is the online subscription model, which is Game Pass. Like PlayStation Plus on the PS5, Game Pass allows you to download an array of titles, new and old, and play them at any time on your Xbox Series X with a monthly fee. That means you can play original Xbox games, Xbox 360 games, Xbox One, and day one releases on the Xbox Series X. So brand new releases are available on Game Pass. And to be quite frank with you, the comparison between Game Pass and PlayStation Plus, it's, it's not even comparable. Game Pass, you get so many more titles and it's such a better value for the same price. This is another reason why the Xbox Series X has a big advantage over the PS5 and another reason why in 2023, it's still worth purchasing and very much worth its price. Now, some other recent news for the Xbox, Microsoft recently acquired Activision. So there are rumors that a lot of games that are going to be developed by Activision now may be exclusive just to the Xboxes. And unfortunately, this is a case where certain titles are only available on certain consoles. But if you fall in the family of Xbox, this is a huge plus and a huge benefit knowing that Activision will definitely be making video games for the Xbox Series X and the Series S. Now, aside from the gaming, which the Xbox Series X does quite well, it also does home multimedia very well. Having a Blu-ray disc drive, you can also use it to watch movies and you can download a lot of apps where you can stream shows or movies onto your TV. So streaming services like Apple, Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO, they're all available on the Xbox Series X. And a lot of people don't talk about it, but the Edge browser on the Xbox Series X is actually quite great as well. You can actually connect an external keyboard and browse the internet on your TV at home through the Xbox. So a lot of things that are overlooked by a lot of people, but the multimedia portion of the Xbox Series X is also very, very, very good. Now, in terms of pricing, the Xbox Series X is currently listed at $500 USD or $650 for those of you who are in Canada. And a lot of times you actually can find it with a bundle for the same price. I personally got the Diablo edition. So $500 with a free game. It's actually a digital download. And I actually got lucky and got a free controller with it. 
Now with Black Friday around the corner, I would say keep a lookout for these deals and try and get a console with either the Game Pass bundle or a video game with it rather than just a standalone console itself. So the main question, is the Xbox Series X still worth purchasing in 2023? And I think based on the options that you have and what's coming in the future, it absolutely is. Having an established array of titles three years into its launch and having absolutely no issues with performance, the Xbox Series X is very much a console to purchase and you don't have to worry about Xbox releasing a new console anytime soon. Rumors are always circulating, but for a fact, Xbox will not be releasing a new generation console next year and probably not even in 2025. Same goes with the PlayStation. So it all comes down to personal preference. If you like Microsoft and you like the titles and games available for Microsoft, then go with the Xbox and Xbox Series X. Now, if you're a Sony guy and you like the Sony exclusive titles, then go with the PlayStation 5. Now, I will say that there is an alternative to the Xbox Series X, and that is the Series S. I actually did a video review. You can check it out right here. But that is pretty much for those of you who aren't interested in 4K gaming and don't really need the full graphical performance of the next gen games. This is for people that just want to stay on top of all the new releases that are out there and don't want to pay the hefty price. Overall, the Xbox Series X is an amazing, amazing console, and I personally highly, highly recommend it to anybody. And that's it for today's video, guys. I will be doing a full comparison between the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S in a few weeks. But in terms of that, I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you end up purchasing the Xbox Series X, let me know in the comments below. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace.